Thank you, thank you very much. It was obviously a long day. We've heard a lot of inspiring speakers. I think uh, there's a lot to think about in the next few hours and obviously the next years because it won't happen overnight. We have a cycle of conferences that we're organizing here uh, in this place called Barbarians at the Gate. So it's Les Barbares Attack, it's in French. But one of them in December, a few months ago, was dedicated to the luxury industry. And it really jump-started the whole effort that led um, up to Hackers on the Runway, the two-day events uh, in which you're participating today. So Barbarians at the Gate comes from a very simple idea. It's the, you have the incumbents, the big companies, the established brands, and those are the empire. And attacking those brands are newcomers that uh, obey, who obey to different rules. And it's because you can't, it's so difficult to understand their rules and their goals, what they're looking for, what they're trying to do. It's so difficult that it's very hard to counter them and to fight against them. That's the, the, the shock between the empire and the barbarians, and it's, it's quite hard. So I've, my job today was to listen. I was sitting here at the front row, and I listened to almost every single word that was spoken on this stage. And I, I wanted to share a few ideas with you uh, as a wrap-up for the whole day. So the first idea is, I think luxury has survived globalization, and it has really scaled up to a global scale and manage to, to, to sell to customers that could be at the other end of the world. But that global economy could, is kind of becoming a threat for the luxury industry because it creates a widening gap between the designers, the brands, those who, ins who create the products, who, who, who try to inspire the customers and the customers themselves because they're in other cultures, they're in, on other markets, they're at the far side of the world. It's as if the brands are on one side of the river and the customers are on the other, other side. And that gap, that widening gap, because the markets are getting so big and so large, is a threat because it isn't luxury anymore if you don't have a mutual inspiration between the designer and his first, uh, his most loyal customers. Uh, the, the, the first who buy the products. Another issue is the exceptional experience that uh, was an exclusivity for the customers of luxury uh, is uh, gradually become, uh, uh, becoming commoditized. This is one of the key change uh, led by the digital economy, by the growth of the digital economy. It's that suddenly everyone is served as if there were luxury customers, because all those entrepreneurs are so obsessed with the customer experience, with the user experience, that suddenly we're treated like we're rich people and uh, uh, like we deserve the best treatment ever. And so the, that exceptional experience that made the difference, that really created the frontier between mass markets and luxury markets uh, doesn't exist anymore. It's being commoditized. and. There are two uh, scenarios that could happen. One, the first one is that lux luxury, because the exceptional experience that was the trademark of the industry is commoditized, suddenly dissolves into mass markets. You can't tell the difference anymore between luxury products and ordinary products and premium products be because every one of these products is consumed uh, into an exceptional uh, customer experience. And so it's highly improbable. It's a scenario, but I think we, we've heard, especially Seth Godin, who explained to us that we mainly sh uh, buy products because we like to have stories that we can tell to ourselves. That's why we, we buy uh, luxury products. And so uh, that threat, it exists, but it's improbable because we're probably going to, to continue to, to like to tell uh, stories to ourselves. The number, threat, uh, the number two threat is the, the emergence of new brands. Um, as uh, Charles Adler from Kickstarter has explained to us, suddenly the web, the, the, the internet, the digital economy as a whole helps creators, designers to reach 
the audience at a faster rate and uh, without friction, without any friction. It's easier for a new designer, for a young designer to, you know, to, to decide that he won't go work for the big luxury houses and that he will go directly on the market to find its uh, first customers and grow with them and with their trust and with their support. And so new brands will emerge. It will go faster and faster. It will be harder and harder for the incumbents to resist the pressure of those new brands.